opponent still has nothing. Wow, by getting rid of that Karn, that really gave us a major edge here against our opponent. So, we're going to go swinging here. Battle cry triggers. All right, so. Down to four. Wow. Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, originally this deck started as a standard option that was going to be built for a future deck tech, but I kept thinking in my mind, wait a second, can we build this even better for the Explorer format? Good question! And originally that's where we were going to start with. However, I took it one more step and thought to myself, wait a second, can we build this even better for the historic formats? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. So without further ado, join me as we play this deck in the historic format, a deck that I am simply calling the Batman. Long time viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So our historic Batman deck has an average mana curve about 2.4. You're looking at, again, utilizing Orzhov colors of white and black. We are rocking 24 creatures, 4 instants, 6 artifacts, 2 enchantments, and 24 lands. There was a small part of me that actually wanted to hold off a couple of more months on this deck tech only because some of the artwork that we did see from the upcoming Bloomborough set that comes out in the late end of the summer dictates that we will be seeing definitely a little bit more bat support, but I honestly was a little impatient, so that's why we're going to be doing this deck tech here now. But going back to the decks, all we're just trying to do is just focus on one thing. We're just trying to make as many bats as possible, whether it's hard casted or if we're just making a ton of tokens. That may not sound like anything interesting, but hear me out for a second as we explain our game plan. First off, let's talk about the creatures. So with Ruin Lurker Bat in the one drop slot, all it simply does is have Flying and Lifelink, but at the beginning of our end step, if we descended this turn, we could descry one. There are some cards in our deck that'll trigger off this ability, but we will talk about that a little bit later on. In the two drop slot, you have Leering Onlooker here, a simple little card, which is a 1-3 vampire. However, if it does die, or if it's at least in the graveyard, we can then exile it for four mana to create two bat creature tokens. And we also are going to be rocking Deep Cavern Bat. If you do play Standard, this is definitely a card that's very familiar to all of you, and it's a really awesome card. Just now, of course, it as it enters the battlefield, we can then take a peek at our opponent's hand, and then we get to exile at least one non-land card, at least until the bat leaves the battlefield. This is going to be a really great card for us in the early game, just to pick off a certain key card that prevents our opponent from executing their game plan. In the three drop slot, you have Sanguine Evangelist here, and you'll also have Courier Bat. With the Courier Bat, this basically will help us bring back one of our creature cards from our graveyard to our hand, as long as we gain some life this turn. And thankfully, several of our bats already have lifelink, which is going to be great for us to trigger off this ability. As far as our Sanguine Evangelist, so this three mana 2 1 Vampire Cleric has the Battle Cry ability. Remember that what that means is when this creature attacks, each other attacking creature will get a buff of plus one plus zero until end of turn. Also, of course, when it ETBs, you get to create at least one bat creature token or if it dies you also get to get a bat out of the deal so this is great for us for our aggro plan to help us go wide and again do some extra damage to our opponents in the four and five drop slot you have murkwood bats here this is actually a really great card for us in our deck specifically not only because it's a bat but also for the fact that whenever we create or sacrifice a token each opponent will lose one life and of course we're going to be making a lot of bat tokens so this will help burn out our opponent very quickly as that five drop i just mentioned right now and i am just going to say it right now i'm going to butcher this so hear me out for a second, Alcazar's Deepest Betrayal, a 5 mana 4-4 four, four bat god legendary creature that has flying and lifelink. When this bat god attacks, each opponent discards a card. When For each opponent who can't, you get to draw a card. Whenever an opponent discards a land card, you get to create a 1-1 one, one black bat creature token with flying. When our bat god dies, however, we get to flip it from the battlefield tapped and transformed into a land called Temple of the Dead. This land just allows us to either tap for black, or we can also pay for 3 and tap it to transform it back into to our bad god however you can only activate this if a player has one or fewer cards in hand and only at sorcery speed whoo that is definitely a lot to take in but simply put this is going to be a really awesome card for us on the top end of our curb just to close out the game or at the very least even if it does get blown up we can still utilize it as land to ensure we can just keep doing what we need to do of course the main pillar for the whole deck in the support package is going to be the one and only desecrated tomb a lot of people probably forgot about this card from the m19 set but for those of you who do need to get 
a quick little reminder, this is basically what it reads. Desecrated Tomb is a 3 mana artifact that just says, whenever one or more creature cards leaves your graveyard, you get to create a 1-1 black bat creature token with flying. So, as obviously you can tell, with cards such as our Leering Onlooker and our Courier Bat, this will allow us to keep bringing back either our creatures, or we can just exile them to make some tokens, and this of course will trigger off our Desecrated Tomb to create even more tokens to help us go wider, and also maybe burn out our opponent along the way, or again give us a lot of options to just swing at our opponent to get to our win. As far as the rest of the cards in the deck that provide support for the whole game plan, we're going to use cards such as Duskrow's Reliquary here as our pseudo removal. This of course does require us to sacrifice an artifact or a creature, but we have so many tokens in the deck that that shouldn't be a problem for us. Speaking of sacrificial options here, we also have Deadly Dispute to help us draw some cards and of course create a treasure token to help us ramp a little bit more into the early and mid game. For Case of the Gateway Express, this thing is this is a great card for us to just do a little bit of extra damage, pseudo removal, but of course once we trigger it off, its anthem ability basically does the same thing as the Evangelist to then give us a lot more power back behind our creatures. Looking at the land package though, remember we are a budget deck so we're just going to keep it as simple as possible. We have some planes, we have some swamps, we have a Phyrexian tower which is great for us to sacrifice if we do need a little extra mana in a pinch, a Bajuka Bog here for some graveyard hate, some silent clearings, remember that again also this, and of course our little fetch land here of Obscura Storefront will trigger off Ruin Lurker Bat's Descend ability to ensure that we can then fix more of our next draws and this is great for us for the early part of the game. Of course your sideboard is as follows. You're going to have Duress, of course. This is going to be great for that early part of the game when you just need to pick off key cards against especially those control and combo decks out there. We already have a Bajuka Bog, but it doesn't hurt to have a little extra redundancy with our Graveyard Hate, so that's why we're rocking Soul Guide Lantern. We have Case of the Gateway Express and another extra copy in here for some more extra removal. Speaking of extra removal, you'll also have Bone Shards here, which is great for us because we can also discard, say, our Leering Onlookers to then just get the max value out of it, or we can even sacrifice them if you need to in a pinch. Since we, of course, are doing a little bit of a light sacrifice pack here we're going to take advantage of some blood artists here so we can throw these in if you want to stabilize more against aggro decks out there so then with the life gain and drain it gives us an extra option for a much more versatility in the deck and then finally in the final part here you'll have two copies of fracture here which is going to be your catch-all removal for artifacts enchantments or planeswalkers but of course the number one question we need to ask ourselves is is it possible for the janky group of creatures that are bats to somehow pull off a victory in the historic formats good question well, there's only one way to find out. So as always, we got to take the deck that we just built right now. Let's see how well this deck does in Historic and see how it performs. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can the Batman get us a couple of victories here in Historic? So the good news is we do have the lands we're going to need to start getting our stuff going, but it still might take a little while. However, we do have a lot of disruptions, so if our opponent is a little creature heavy, we do have ways of getting around their stuff, at least in the early part of the game. All right, Fable Passage. No sacking it just yet. Flames. Play a Ruin Lurker Bat. This is great for us in the early game, because this eventually means that we can start descending with some of our lands, and eventually we can scry into what we need. Alright. Bats coming down. Alright, opponent. So they picked white. So they're using Fable Passage. What could that mean? Alright. Ether Hub. Oh, energy. Interesting. I have no idea what our opponent's playing, but I'm kind of fascinated, so I guess we'll see what they're going to be doing in a little bit. Obscure Stormfront. So that does trigger Descend, which is great for us. We will need to get a Swamp. And from there, go swinging. Get them down to 19. This may seem a little weird, everybody, but we're actually going to sacrifice our Ruin Lurker Bat, and this is why. We need to make sure that they can't turn on their Collector's Vault. So that's Exiled. The good news also, of course, is we can also use our Courier Bat to bring back the Ruin Lurker Bat, so we're actually not too shabby right here. We just need to take a little bit of time to start doing our thing. Okay, opponent's got no option, so that's fine for us. That helps us out quite a bit, actually. Phyrexian Tower. We will do this here. Okay. Deep Cavern Bat. Let's see what our opponent's trying to do here. Take a little peeky peek. Okay, so that's what they're trying to do here. Get rid of that Karn. That's still an early ways away from them, so all we just need to do is eventually just start building up our stuff here, and we should be able to get there with what we got. 
They have a lot of stuff in hand, they can't do anything until they start cheating stuff out. So if we can just disrupt them further, we should be okay. So with that, we will play Obscura Storefront. Sacked. We will get a planes. Go swinging here. Down to 18. Courier bat. This brings back our Ruin Lurker bat. Okay, we're looking pretty good right now. It's, again, very slow, but we are going to eventually build to what we need. And our opponent is kind of stumbling right now, which is great for us. Ruin Lurker bat, again. We'll play Sanguine Evangelist. Mega bat. Obscure storefront. Yeah, we're doing it. We're looking pretty good right now. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together. We swing. Down to 15 opponents. We descend, which is great. We don't need that swamp, so we'll put it away. We have plenty of lands now. Okay, we can start doing big swings here. We're going to be able to close this game out pretty quick. Opponent still has nothing. Wow, by getting rid of that Karn, that really gave us a major edge here against our opponent. So, we're going to go swinging here. Battle cry triggers. All right, so... Down to four. Wow. Okay. Well, we're looking pretty good here. So, we'll just pass. Okay, they make a token. I guess that's all they can do. But they have two cards in hand we don't know of, which is a little terrifying. Oh, well, <laughs> yes, we did it, everybody. Not really an exciting match, but you can see, this is why it's important to make sure you disrupt key cards from your opponent here. So, if I was to guess, if they were able to tick down with Karn, that probably would have helped them snowball into their victory. So, make sure that when you get your Deep Cavern bat out, make sure you then pick off that one key card that kind of disrupts their whole game plan, and you too can get a victory with the Batman. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can our Batman deck get us a couple wins here in the historic format? So the good news is we do have plenty of lands, a Deep Cavern Bat for Disruption, Courier Bat to bring something back, and a Mirkwood Bat for token payoffs a little bit later on. But I don't know if we're going to be able to pull this off. We're going to see if we can with what we got. Ooh, okay, so we did get a Desecrated Tomb, but that'll be helpful for a little bit later on. A surprise tool, if you will. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. In the meantime, let's play Obscure Storefront. We sacrifice it. We can get out a Plains. We have two Swamps, so we have enough. Castle Lockway. Warlock class. Okay. Is our opponent trying to do some life gain drain shenanigans? Well, let's get a peeky peek at what they're trying to do. So let's see. What do you got, opponent? Okay. So, wow. Um, I guess I would say Phyrexian Arena is going to go. It's not really going to hurt us that much here, because our opponent most likely is just going to get rid of it, but it does slow them down to a degree. Most likely it's going to be a Blood Chief's Thirst to our head. No surprise. So they get back their Fire and Arena, but they can't cast it yet, so they will just pump up their Warlock class. Get another card. Villain. Ignis. Okay, we got another Swamp, which is great. Desecrated to number one. And pass. Fire Arena. Leering Onlooker. Okay, well, that's not too bad for later. Put down a Plains. We will put down Leering Onlooker. They draw a card. Lose a life. Alright, well, they got their engine pieces already going ahead of us, which is unfortunate, but we hopefully can find a way to get around this. Another Leering Onlooker. Alright, so with that, Desecrated 2, number 2. We'll play Leering Onlooker, number 2. Nothing we can do yet, but again, we are slowly building up to what we need. Opponent draws. They lose some life. Thoughtsies. Oh. Alright, well that means our work with bats goes bye-bye, which is unfortunate, but hey, it is what it is. They will drain us out here. We're down to 13. Mirroring onlooker. Just one. They go up to 25. Okay, so. No attacks yet. We're going to bring back our tokens next turn. But this will be quite a few tokens for us to get. So this will really help us out. We just need to sponge hits for a little bit. Wow, opponent's going to play two Phyrexian Arenas. That's a little greedy. Alright, level three. A little scary. But this is fine, everyone. Murderous Rider. Okay. That hurts, unfortunately. But it's okay. We still can do our thing, everybody. 
They are tapped out completely. So, leering onlooker number one. Make some bats. We will block and block. Buying us some time. We're down to 10. Okay. Whew. Well, the good news is, a obscure storefront does trigger courier bat. So with that, we will get another swamp. Gain some life. Courier bat. That does trigger things here. So, with that, we will get back Mirkwood bats. Make some tokens. No attacks yet. Okay, well, our deck is trying to start doing its thing. But... We have to still find a way to get around stuff. If we can just play at least one of the bats, and we can just make some tokens, we can still get into this match. Oh. Well, that vampire demon might cinch it for our opponent here. Down to 11. Ooh, okay. Well, we're not dead yet. So, with that, we will play Mirkwood Bats. We will play Case of the Gateway Express. What do we take out, though? I think we need to take out that blood letter. That's off the field, thankfully. We swing with just three bats. We just want to be able to turn this on. Down to 19. Okay. Well, our bats are now a little more stronger, so this is great for us. So we can buy ourselves some time here. Down to 15 for our opponent. They go down to 14. Down to 13. Very greedy opponent. But can they make a comeback? They have a ton of cards still in hand, which is frightening. We might be screwed. Oh, well. Well, there it is, everybody. Well, this stinks. All right, well, we didn't quite make it there yet. They had more life gain and drain than us, but we came close. We came very close to what we were trying to do there. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can the Batman get us some wins here in Historic? So, we do have some lands. We have a Deadly Dispute and a Courier Bat. We also have our Bat God, but that's still a little ways away. Can we hold off with what we have? Well, I'm tempted to just keep this because I'm hoping that maybe our opponent also will be a little slow. All right, got a mountain. Nothing yet, but that's fine. Swamp, okay. Three courier bats in a row. Not ideal. We'd need something that has life link to then take advantage of our courier bats, but that's fine. We can still got time. Forest. Room bell forward master. Okay, well, looks like it's gonna be goblins, so we'll just have to mentally prepare for that. Desecrated tomb is gonna be great once that time comes. Goblin archaeomancer. Okay. Is it a goblin combo deck? Trap finder. Down to 19. Okay, Ruin Lurker Bat is nice, so with that, we can play that and pass. So we're going to probably have to chump block here just for a moment, just to then make this all work. Goblin Instigator. Okay, well, the combo's going to go off right now, unfortunately. They make a token. That's a lot of goblins to deal with. Pony goes swinging. Block the Archaeomancer. Deadly Dispute. We sacrifice our Ruin Lurker Bat. Draw some cards. Make a treasure. Down to 16. Okay, so how are we going to get out of this? Desecrated Tomb. We will play Deep Cavern Bat. I need to see what our opponent's trying to do here. Okay, they got a Muxus, so that's gone. Whew, okay. We got a little bit of time to spare. Hopefully, it should be enough. Goblin Chieftain. All right. Well, I don't see us winning this one. All right. Wow. Goblin's really just as nasty in the story. Stop! He's already dead! Well, I mean, what can you do? Goblins and Historic is a very fast format now with a lot of combo creature decks out there. Ours is not as good, but hey, we can only do so much, of course, on a budget. So it is what it is. And there you have it, ready. So that was the Batman for the historic format. And you tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Would you play this deck in any way, shape, or form? To be perfectly honest with you, maybe we were a little too ambitious playing it in historic. I was very happy with what the deck was able to do, at least when it went off. But as you saw from many of our matches, we kind of got 
blown out quite a bit by some of the bigger decks out there. Many of the other combo decks out there are a lot more faster than us, and many of the other creature decks out there tend to be a lot more stronger and a lot more aggressive. So when it comes to decks such as goblins and elves, they of course are going to have a lot more support than us, despite the fact that we tried our best with what we had. Maybe if I did this again, maybe we might consider adding another land. Maybe we might have to trim some of our less than efficient types of removal. Dust Girl's Reliquary, I thought in theory worked well, but maybe we should probably be better off just using safe fatal pushes and then maybe the case of the gateway express does ask a little bit more than we were hoping for from the deck still i still believe that with a couple bit more pieces maybe in the future bats just might have what it takes to become a solid threat and can hold its own against other creature decks in the future now for those of you who ever are a fan of this type of gameplay even if it is a bit janky stick around because those of you who have made it this far into the video you are my true fiery friends and for that as always i'll be happy to show you what i would recommend to upgrade this deck and make it even better than ever now as far as upgrades to the deck mostly it's just going to come into the land base itself and i know i know some people might be saying inferno man don't you always say to upgrade your mana base and i'm gonna say it again yes you need to always upgrade your mana base. So never really skimp on it if you can afford to get rare lands. So what I mean by that, of course, is pretty much every kind of dual land you can think of. We're going to add in more copies of Silent Clearing. We have our full sets of Godless Shrine. We have Concealed Courtyard, Cave of Colios, the Pathway lands, of course. Also, there are another major upgrades are we'll have another, we'll have a copy of Castle Lockwain here. We'll have a Jono Seed of the Empire as options for us, as well as being able to keep your Phyrexian Tower and your Bajuka Bog. For the actual main cards in the deck right here, you actually don't really need to change anything. So I would highly recommend just to keep it simple, we're going to just keep the main game plan as is, so that won't be changed at all. Your sideboard also will only have a couple of light upgrades, and it's mostly just going to be, again, get the one and only Thought Seize, but we also have access now to another very powerful card in Surgical Extraction. So this is a super awesome card that can help you snipe select pesky cards that your opponent has and get them out of their decks to make sure that your game plan can function a lot better. And with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck. Overall, yes, this is not going to be the most competitive option for you out there. So if you are a fan mostly of just being on the more serious side, you can obviously look at Orzhov token decks out there. You can look at, say, maybe taking this back into Explorer or even Standard and then kind of trimming it back down to what it was intending to be. But that's not really the point of these deck decks. The point of these deck decks is to give you something that's much more unique and off the beaten path from everything else out there. And that's the reason why I do these deck decks in the first place, to put something together that's not only cheap but also unique and fun so to put it another way if you are a fan of graveyard shenanigans if you are a fan of token style decks but if you are a fan of playing maybe a tribe of creatures that don't get that much support but have slowly become their own unique thing I would definitely say, give this deck a try, and I assure you, when you manage to beat down your opponent with a bunch of bats when they're not expecting it, when you manage to then go super wide and go super big with some of their pump abilities and sacrifice a ton of them for value, you'll definitely have a lot of fun doing so. You'll be very surprised at how well the deck can perform on its own, and I assure you, you will not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!